Now, let's give a warm welcome to the incredibly talented and equally kind soul that is Julia Wood. She had some technical difficulties tonight. It's a theme tonight. You may know her as a published author of nonfiction and short stories, or perhaps you've seen her light up the stage with her spoken word performances. Her novella, Jenny Bean, Calamity Queen, was a finalist for the Sea Whip Prize 2023 and is set to be published in the Book of Witty Women anthology on Amazon later this month. Get ready to be entertained by Julia's wit and charm. She's sure to bring something special to our gathering today. So, please give a huge welcome to Julia Wood. No, right, okay. This is, um, I hate beige, right? Just to be clear. Um, this is called beigeism. I must confess, in all earnestness, I am rather beigeist. Stuff understated, pale, washed out, vapid decor. The dumbed down, numbed out erasure of colour. The flurry of home improvement programmes, teaching us how to tone down houses, the heartless removal of porticos, coving, ceiling rows, mouldings. No, not that magnificent fireplace with the carved figures of angels and gargoyles. It's been in the room since 1840. It's got to go. New owners said so. Husband and wife, they just don't like craftsmanship, things ornate. They prefer beige. It's being replaced with some minimalist eyesore, a widescreen TV, a computer games console, or a sculpture that looks like a turd in a prison. In this plastic iconoclastic world, all beauty, passion, vision is futile in this muted, sterile wasteland. There is no hope. I wring my hands and I throw my remote at the television. Cracking the screen. Screen. Who ever heard of such vandalism? Tearing up the hearth of the house. If it has character, take it out. The aimless flick and tasteless twitch of a brush that paints walls the colour of baby sick. Slaves to the crazy name compulsion to swathe every wall with dreary emulsion. Beige sofas, rugs, blinds, beige dreams, beige lives. Even the mugs of age, though wifey did ponder, um, should we have grey? Just for a change, darling. No, it will spoil our colour scheme, husband says tartly. Oh, look at this colour, wifey exclaims. Pensioners anorak. How chic and arty. They do it in silk and they do it in flat mat. Perfect, hubby says. Let's go for that. Is this what passes for home improvement? A place like an anemic bowel movement? This is the aesthetic dystopia, the antidote to the cornucopia, a plague of beige upon our houses. But what does this say about our values? This dreary alliance with the insipid way of living, the fitted for mica kitchen craze. What does this frightful dullness convey? A strange taste dichotomy, collective lobotomy, loss of faith, confidence, Jaded nonchalant, post industrial tepid malaise, the coming of beige, the slow death of our cultural childhood shyly <sighs> bequeaths its last breath, then is silent. But what of colour, of splendour, remains in this tired domain of neutral spaces? Rooms that look like dental surgeries. Please, someone, please purge us of this. But beauty retreats to a faraway land because everyone prefers bland. It makes me depressed, this cult of the faded. So I must confess in all earnestness, I am 
rather bajest. Okay, and here's another one complaining about the modern world. I do that a lot. I go under the guise of grumpy Edwardian lady, which is punning on country Edwardian lady. Flora Thompson would be turning in her grave. Anyhow, this is called Phallus Erectus and is about my hatred of high rise buildings. What buildings have we erected that will be respected in a hundred, a thousand years? What will they reveal about our lives, minds, fixations, innovations? Something magnificent and profound that rose from the ground stone by stone that stands indifferent, alone, brushes the clouds and makes us say, I'm proud to be human, such is their beauty, such structure, ardour, patience, such art. But sadly, we are not that clever. Our endeavours are architectural farts in the face of aesthetics, pathetic plastic profanities, shameless masturbation of a certain body part. But only when it's hard, such vanity. Council plans are behind this calamity. A committee of manically depressed crustaceans would be more creative than those amoeba-brained, disengaged arbitrators of PVC machine-made obscenities, soulless and empty. Fluorescent skyscrapers, oversized dildos that wobble each time the north wind blows. What will they make of those in the future? Scratching their heads in confusion, musing. Hmm, 21st century humans love sex toys. They were obsessed boys with phallus erectus and the contents of their trouser pockets. I mean, have you seen Bezos Rocket? Phallic erections in their millions. Weird. Maybe a strange satanic cult, the frantic worship or fear of massive willies pondering their intended purpose. Hmm. Neurotic. Exotic, creepily furtive, what a bunch of silly billies. Maybe there was a phallic ecology, a maintain the green space ideology, a calamitous cock up of hippie philosophy, build upwards instead of sideways, grow slyly towards the skyline. Don't stop until you flop. Those fossil fueled ejaculations will cause indignation. Future voices will cry into these dim polluted skies this is where their world went wrong. They should have used a bloody condom. What a legacy to be leaving. A tall, plastic windowed penis. A civilization slumping and falling. Surely they weren't all obsessed with humping? Maybe. Instead of the giant erectus, wobbly sex toys, we should dig random holes in the earth and just leave them. For future people's puzzled gaze, they'll scramble to understand their meaning. Mmm, troubling, they will figure. We need to fill them in. And they will snigger <laughs> and grin <sighs> and say, oh, blimey, this was a culture obsessed with vaginas. Thank you. Right, cracking on. This is called Stop the Builders. I just don't like modern architecture. Just, you know, that's just my thing right at the moment. B in my very large bonnet, right. Stop the Builders um, is inspired by a certain um, children's song cartoon, which is familiar to most people. Chainsaws massacre trees and hassle from mung bean munchers will not stop them. Stealing birds habitats for a few student flats, sacred spaces, peaceful places, animals, havens, our escape route back to nature. These are the concrete troops at war with beauty, freedom, peace. Oh, please stop this bunch of fracking morons. Look at all these urban foxes living in discarded boxes. Ginger immigrants, they are vermin. Flooding and shoving in sly determined, crowding out poor wretched humans. I read it in the Daily Mail. So of course it must be true then. We're flooded with disgruntled badgers, biting people's ankles, cadding food from bins. Who let them in? They don't belong in human spaces, striped invaders. Filthy scranglers prowl outside our perfect houses. When will 
people wake up. Listen, these are the unwitting victims of concrete troops at war with beauty, freedom, peace. Oh, please stop this bunch of fracking morons. Developers, developers, green space, developers, irreverent, malevolent, mother earth, rapists, money tree shakers, honeybee traitors, grubby purse raiders. Yes, we hate you. Oh, look, brown lands, brown lands, can we build here? Yes, we can. Green space, green space, we really raise it. Can we build here? Yes, we can, mate. Planning permission, can we fix it? Yes, we can. Stop the builders, stop the builders. Where are animals meant to go when their homes are being stolen? Where are the birds? supposed to sing in spring when trees have fallen leaves have gone the bees no longer settle on the flowers petals once adorned with honey rot beneath the supermarkets dismal thrust and thrumming the bypass traffic tugs and hums past grey degraded slums and there is nowhere left to run no one who can save them from these concrete troops at war with beauty, freedom, peace? Oh, please stop this bunch of fracking morons. Developers, developers, green space, envelopers, irreverent, malevolent, mother earth, rapists, money tree shakers, honeybee traitors, grubby purse raiders. Yes, we hate you. Oh, look, brown lands, brown lands, can we build her? Yes, we can. Green space, green space, we really raise it. Can we build her? Yes, we can, mate. Planning permission, can we fix it? Yes, we can. Stop the builders, stop the builders, stop the builders. Stop. Right, okay, slight change of subject. This is a piece that I wrote about binge drinking in young people. And I had a friend years ago, he sort of had a real problem with it. And um, this is called Alice in Chunderland. Tequila Slammer says to Alice, drink me. It makes her look bigger when she's feeling small and withered. It makes her feel invincible, seduces her, convinces her that she's the most attractive girl, that the world evolves around her, though, in truth, it spins around her until she hits the ground and weeps a crumpled, sad Moschino heap. Dignity is blasted. She's in a deep tequila sleep, Dresses, scans, knickers showing, oblivious to the growing crowd who come to gloat. What a tramp. They film her on their iPhones, laughing. How long has she fasted to get so drunk she cannot function? Onlookers cast scathing judgment, making sanctimonious assumptions. Oh, what a disgrace, just off her face. Drink till you drop. Why can't she know when to stop? Her friends help her to Chunderland. She staggers to a cubicle. Tights, laddered, wrecked, bedraggled. She just wants to feel beautiful, not minuscule or ridiculed, or made to feel she's living in a world that is too big for her. Citrus bitter on the taste buds, salt on tongue, and all that nonsense. Get those selfies onto Facebook, swig, stamp all together. Eh! Repeat until you fall unconscious. Patient and concerned friends hold her hair back, wipe her brow, wondering how this will end and if she'll ever wake up, realise, understand the damage and the curse of this may be irreversible. Still, for a night, just one night, she could be that girl, the one whom everyone admires. Confident, the sassy one slapping on the makeup, hoping to find a better way of coping, if only. She's waiting for the manual on how to be a grown up. Could she buy it or download it? How do other people do it? Why am I such a screw up? Tequila Slamo says to Alice, drink me, feel like a celebrity. Forget the stress, the dark caress of deep depression, the empty loneliness of faking it, believing you will never make it past the age of 20. She's leaning on the chipboard wall, a goddess complex in a black dress, head down the toilet bowl. The rabbit hole is armitage, shanks and flanked by frantic patient friends. She's Alice, queen of Chunderland, 
wasted is her wonderland. Does she drink to murder demons, overwhelming feelings? I wonder what has caused this. Is unprocessed childhood trauma the reason why she drinks until she throws up half digested coma? What's her story? What torment is she enduring? Maybe she's in debt up to her heaving shoulders, wrestling with past regret. Or lonely, drowning in life's weed-clogged pond. Maybe she longs to have a good time, but has forgotten how. And so she settles for inebriation, temporary annihilation of her desperation for social validation. Perhaps she is a metaphor for cultural anxieties, a symbol of the status-obsessed nature of society and unconsciousness is better than the terror of reality. Okay, right, um, now, the slight changes. That's quite dark, actually, wasn't it? Okay, I've got, um, hold on, I have two more. Okay, this is about having ADHD, which just makes life rather fun and sometimes stressful and sometimes appalling and wretched um, and sometimes funny. Right, it's called Dysregulation is a Thief of Time. Later, I'm going out, but that's later, not right now. Right now, it's just gone five. <sighs> so I put my feet up on my couch, watching Countdown and repeats of Miss Marple, how slowly the hours creep when you are waiting to get ready and you just want to scarper. Time snags like a cat's claw on the Persian carpet. Watch the clock, tick tock, watch the clock, tick tock. It's nowhere near approaching seven, I've got forever and some. Spent an hour on eBay bidding for a B-day. It's still not even six, hey, I think I might redecorate. I have the time and the paint. Oops, not sure about the roller tray. Think I need to get one. I could nip to home base. I'll be back in time to paint my face. Lots of time, lots of time. Forget the clock. Tick tock. Lots of time. I get to home base, browsing paints. Aisle to aisle, noisy children. Ah! I hate it. Brains overstimulated. Thoughts like feral dogs are chasing squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. I'm distracted, acting like I'm on speed. Think I need to be sedated. Get to check out. Where's my purse? Swear and curse. It's not there. It's not there. I left it in my other bag. Expletive spill out louder, louder. Till I'm drawing quite a crowd of people saying, who's this loony? Praying I will not be publicly arrested. I went home breathless, realising in my panic, my manic, fluctuating state. Oh, silly me. Forgot my keys. Standing at my front door. I was sure I took them with me, but my memory is flakier than a dandruff convention. And don't even mention adrenaline hyperventilation. I'm pressing on the doorbell in an agitated manner. Let me in, damn it, damn it, let me in, damn it, damn it. The sweat begins to dribble in a damp scribble. Feet are slipping and my shoes hair is dripping. I look as if I've swum the channel or acted in the steamy sex scene from a bodice ripper. Check my watch. Tick tock, tick tock, watch the clock. Shock, dismay, I'm 20 minutes late. Book cab, race round, find keys, get dressed, lost my top, can't wear that then. Find another, start to blubber uncontrollably, cannot function stoically. Never mind, procrastination is the thief of time. Emotional dysregulation is the thief of mine. Mascara wand in my eye, ouch, I cry. Now one eye's as red as Satan, can't go out like that, have to wear an eye patch. So now I look like Madame X or a Freemason. Reject, except for this old thermal vest which smells of damp, neglected crotches. Why is everything I do so hot potch? Guess what? I've lost my phone. When did I last have it with me? Was it in the lavatory? Wait a minute. I can hear its low vibration. That will be the cab calling. Where is it? Where is it? I've no time for faff and stalling, blast and crap and buggeration. It's in the front room somewhere, on the table, on the chair. Found it. Ah! Beneath the cat. TCP in the plaster, don't have time, playing hygiene baccarat. I put my shoes on backwards, can't find my own arse, the sat nav or the Oxford apps. Don't know if I'm going, coming, coming, going, but nor will anyone else. Cab meter is running, kick my shoes across the floor, fall out of the door, get into the cab, bleed on the back seat. Think the cat hit a vein, need to go to A&E, don't have time, stop, start again, forgot my hat, let's go back. 
dash back out, climb back in. Oops, wrong car. Two strange men sat in the front. Oh no, I think I'm going to get abducted. I think you've got the wrong car, love. Oops, sorry, I thought I booked it. Get back out, cab gone. So now I'm running through the streets, stones feel sharp beneath my feet. That is when I realise. Forgot to put my shoes on. Run, run, pretend it's sports day. Text my friend on my way. Having a mammary malfunction, buzzards look like sunken dumplings. One's free range, the other's droopy. Try to scoop it back in place. Oh no! In my mad rush to dress so quickly, I forgot my knickers. It's winter and my skirt is skimpy. Curb crawler, leering out stops ignition. How much do you charge, love? Hell's bells, that's all I need, a proposition from some weirdo and a clapped out Nissan. I'm a woman on a mission, can't find venue, I've mislaid it. I'm running down the wrong street with chewing gum stuck to my feet. I don't have time to stop and breathe when finally I get there by some quirky fluke of fate. The place is closed, the lights are down. <sighs> For crying out loud. I got the wrong day. Right, and there's one more, which is my protest about stupid anima, bloody anima app, um, that they're now using to book doctor's appointments. And they're not just angry about this for me, I'm angry about this because it's stopping people who struggle with technology to, to access the services that they need. And I wrote this about elderly people, but it could be about anybody, neurodivergent people like me, but anyhow, it's called the Atlas Dead. There was a woman in the queue, her flesh was long turned blue. She couldn't get the app to load. The call she made was left on hold. The voice that kept her waiting said with soulless automation, hold the line, your call's important. But her cries for help were thwarted. She could not get a face to face. And so she passed away. She's just another Atlas fly tangled in the world wide web. Don't cry. She was collateral damage in a world she was too old to manage. She wasn't on it in the know, not tech savvy, couldn't cope. Slipped through the generation gap because she could not load the app. If you get the app, you'll know it, clap your hands. If you get the app, you'll know it, stamp your feet. If you get the app, you'll know it, for you surely must download it. If you get the app, you'll know it, say hurrah, hurrah. There's a man in Ward 11. He was rushed in here at seven. Collapsed outside Lidl in a pool of his own piddle. He didn't have a smartphone. And he lived too much alone. He's fast track now for heaven's door. But hey, so what? He's old and poor. Bewildered in a world that's changed too fast for him. He starts to fade. He's just another Atlas fly tangled in the world wide web. Don't cry. He's just collateral damage in a world he was too old to manage. He wasn't on it in the know, not tech savvy, couldn't cope. Slipped through the generation gap because he could not load the app. If you get the app, you'll know it, clap your hands. If you get the app, you'll know it, stamp your feet. If you get the app, you'll know it, for you really must download it. If you get the app, you'll know it, say hurrah, hurrah. In the cemetery they sleep, those with unmet healthcare needs, and on the stones above the heads of the disenfranchised dead. The epitaph engraves the fact, here lies one who died because they could not load the app. La 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 um, and I could see on the comments, um, and I know from my own feelings that, yeah, there are not a lot of people that are fans of high-rise buildings. Um, 